All right, so now that we've just talked about phrase structure rules, we can now start to draw tree structures or tree diagrams. Again, linguists use these tree diagrams to represent what's going on structurally in a sentence. How are these different components organized into constituents and into phrases? And how does it all work together as a well-formed sentence in whatever language? So for our examples today, we're just going to be using English, but let's take examples. So let me walk you through how to draw an effective tree diagram. Now, the term tree diagram itself might be kind of misleading because tree suggests you draw from the bottom up. Um, just as a, a hint um, from past experience as a student, it's much more effective to draw these things top down. So anytime you are asked to draw a tree structure, draw it top down. The first thing you want to do is to put an S up top. That means sentence, that whatever you're drawing is going to be a sentence. For our purposes in this class, we're just really going to be tackling sentences here. So remember our old, tree, uh, our old phrase structure rule in English that a sentence minimally consists of a noun phrase and a verb phrase in that order. So it's always useful to give yourself a lot of space when you're drawing these tree structures because things become cluttered down here. So the more space you give yourself up here, the easier it is down here. You'll see what I mean in a moment. So we have a noun phrase and a verb phrase. So all tree structures that you're asked to draw in this class, they're, they're going to start like this. So we can take a lot of sentences and represent it through this very simple tree diagram right here, like the sentence, he left. So we need to do a little bit more detail. We can't just do noun phrase and then draw out he. We've got to specify what this intermediate node is here. And we'd want to call that, oh, a pronoun. So a pronoun, as in he. Well, all right. After that, we have the verb, left. So let's just remind ourselves that that is a verb, left. So it's a very simple tree diagram for that sentence, he left. Well, let's start to complicate it a little bit more. So let's throw in an adverb, like he left quickly. Well, we've already got a verb phrase here. And because quickly, as an adverb, is describing something about the verb, we want to connect it to the verb phrase. So that would be an example of how we represent the phrase, uh, the sentence, he left quickly in English. Well, let's take one that's maybe a little bit more complicated. And I'll leave up the NP and the VP because, like I said, that's how all of these sentences are going to start. So let's change it around a bit. Let's take a sentence like, the big man left quickly. Well, all right, now we've got to do something about the noun phrase here. So we have the big man. So maybe take a second, pause this video, see if you can figure out how to draw the rest of this tree diagram. Otherwise, we'll walk you through it. So we have the. Let's start, let's start out with the and take it word by word. What uh, lexical category does that belong to? It's an article technically, but it's also a determiner. Let's just call it a determiner here. So we have the determiner, the, but we have two other words that we need to take care of in this noun phrase, big man. So what's big? That is an adjective. So we're getting there, almost done with this noun phrase, and now we have the noun, man. Then we have the verb phrase. So once you reach the verb in English, you know automatically, right off the bat, that that verb and everything after it is going to be part of the verb phrase, just as a helpful tip. So we have the verb, left, and then once again we have this adverb, quickly. How do you know you're dealing with an adverb? Well, most of the time if it ends in ly, you could be pretty sure it is an adverb. As it is in this case, it's saying something about the quality of the verb. How quickly did he leave or how did he leave? Quickly. So let's take another one. How about um, a transitive sentence where you get a subject, a verb, and an object. So something like, the man hit the ball. Don't get too intimidated. We have everything we need to draw this tree diagram. So we have, uh, once again, the determiner, the, then we have the noun, man, 
Hit the ball. Okay, well, we've ha we have arrived at the verb, hit. So we know that and everything after it must be part of the verb phrase. Hit the ball. But now, before you, uh, before you dive in, what is the ball? Take it word by word and think about it as a constituent. Um, so it kind of behaves syntactically as one unit, the ball. You could substitute it with a pronoun, he hit it. That's a test for knowing that you're dealing with constituents here. But anyway, the ball, do you have any idea what kind of phrase that is? It's actually a noun phrase. So we have to indicate that by drawing another node coming off of the verb phrase. And then we have the determiner, the, and then we have the noun, ball. The man hit the ball. So maybe you're looking at this and you can see how recursion happens, just as a side note, that you have phrases embedded within phrases, embedded within a sentence. We could even have a prepositional phrase embedded within this noun phrase, which is embedded in this verb phrase, and keep going deeper and deeper. And that's how you would yield an infinitely long utterance. We don't have the space on the chalkboard or the time to do it today, but that's how you can structurally represent that recursion. So let's take a slightly more complicated sentence. The man hit the ball with the bat. Well, all right, so what do we have here? Once again, the determiner, the, and the noun, man, hit the ball with the bat, starts with that verb hit. Everything after it has to be part of the verb phrase. Then we have the noun phrase with the determiner, the, and the noun, ball. But then we have this prepositional phrase, with the bat. So remember, our phrase structure rules in English say that a prepositional phrase must contain a preposition and a noun phrase. So that tells you right there that with the bat has to start with the preposition with, and then you have another noun phrase within this prepositional phrase. The is a determiner. And then you have the noun, bat. The man hit the ball with a bat. So that's, again, how you can see this embedding phrases within phrases so you can get the recursive property that we see in human language. So this is basically how you draw tree structures. But let's take the idea a little bit further by showing how tree structures can actually distinguish meanings in structurally ambiguous utterances. So, structural ambiguity arises when you have one sentence that could yield at least two possible meanings. Alright, so let's take a sentence like, I killed a mouse in my pajamas. I'm sorry it's a kind of violent example, but it's a great example that illustrates structural ambiguity. I killed a mouse in my pajamas. There's two possible meanings to that utterance. One is that you were actually wearing pajamas when you killed the mouse. The other possible meaning is that uh, you killed a mouse and that mouse happened to either crawl up your pajamas while you were wearing them or their pajamas were on the ground and uh, you saw the mouse kind of skittering along in them and that's when you killed the mouse. Either way, I know this is not a pleasant thought, but again, great example of structural ambiguity. So we can actually represent both of those possible meanings through tree structures. So let's take the first of those possible meanings, that I was wearing pajamas and happened to kill a mouse, wherever it was. So again, we have um, the noun here, or I should be a little bit more specific. It's a pronoun, I. And then we have the verb, killed. So again, there's the verb, everything after it and including it is part of the verb phrase. It's kind of a long sentence though, so let's drag our verb note all the way over here, which is okay. I killed. Now we have uh, a mouse. All right, so what kind of phrase is a mouse? That's right, it's a noun phrase. So we have this determiner, a, uh, I killed a, uh, and then the noun, mouse. And now we have what kind of phrase? In my pajamas. That is a prepositional phrase. So it starts with that preposition in, and then we have my pajamas. Now that's also a phrase, and it's a noun phrase. 
And it's also got that determiner, a possessive pronoun more specifically, my. And then you have the noun, pajamas. So this is basically what that tree structure basically is going to look like for both of those meanings. But it's all about where we connect this prepositional phrase to disambiguate the meanings. So we have everything laid out here. I killed a mouse in my pajamas. So the ambiguity structurally arises here in my pajamas. Is it the mouse that's in there or are you as uh, the killer in the pajamas? So let's say that uh, it's that first meaning that I was wearing uh, the pajamas when I killed the mouse. In that case, we want to connect it to the verb phrase here because it's saying something about the act of killing. I know it sounds kind of weird, but you could also think of it like this, that could you tack on an L-Y uh, to this noun in the prepositional phrase and could it make kind of sense? Like I killed a mouse in my, uh, I killed a mouse uh, pajamadly. I know that sounds totally weird, but it would sort of describe your act of what you were doing, what you were wearing in this case, when you killed that poor mouse. So it connects to the verb phrase because after all, you're the one who is wearing the pajamas here. But what if, for example, the mouse happened to be in the pajamas, whether it was crawling up your pant leg and you smushed it or it was on the floor? Well, in that case, we can't draw that prepositional phrase there Instead, it has to be drawn here because it's now describing a property of the mouse, where that mouse is located. So again, with this meaning here, with the dotted line, it represents that I, as the speaker, was wearing the pajamas when I killed the mouse. But if you're drawing the line from the prepositional phrase to the noun phrase here, it means that the mouse was in my pajamas when I killed it. So that's how you can structurally disambiguate two possible meanings from the same exact sentence.